I'm with uh, Gavin Shepherd of the Media Trust at the uh, Third Sector Social Media Convention. It's a great opportunity to ask Gavin about the really interesting plans Media Trust have with uh, Big Lottery Fund for uh, a whole national infrastructure of uh, news hubs. We've got the news that you've got £1.8 million. Um, what's going to happen over the next few years? Well, David, we did some research a couple of years ago, last year in fact, on meeting the news needs of local communities. What it showed was as the commercial sector withdraws from local journalism, communities are left bereft of any local news, and that this has a real disempowering effect on their ability to make decisions in their local communities, to get community action off the ground and so on. Um, but it also showed that there's this enormous emerging sector of citizen journalism and community reporting, be it online or newsletters or uh, websites or Twitter feeds or whatever the uh, mechanism. Uh, but it was unconnected, but it was of varying quality and varying reach. Um, and that there was no sense of aggregating that content, bringing those stories to a wide possible audience um, and showcasing all those amazing stories from around the country for, for better, greater effect. And so our project really is about doing that. It's not about setting up new news hubs necessarily, but it's about connecting them, giving people access to the kind of skills and training and networking and connections that they might need in order to meet their own ambitions, whether it's taking an offline newsletter online or vice versa or turning a Twitter stream into a blog or linking up with a local BBC news station or whatever it might, might be, and about aggregating that content on online and on TV to bring to a wide possible audience and hopefully in inspire other people to think, yeah, I could do that in my community. And um, how's that going to work in practice? You're going to be using the community channel, and I also heard mention of press association. Um, so what's the mechanics of that? Well, the, the main thing is to find and recognise the stuff that's going on already, the community radio stations, the newspapers, the online blogs, um, and, to, and to connect that together so those people have a sense of being able to more easily communicate with each other. Then we want to give them direct access to be able to plug their news stories into the media mainframe. So it's an evolution of our community newswire, which has published 60,000 uh, local community and charity stories over the last few years. That's run by the Press Association, so Press Association journalists will work that content, uh, distribute it to a wider network throughout the, throughout the PA network across the UK, and we'll also aggregate the content, the best of the content, online and on TV at Community Channel and distribute it to other partners as well. Last year, Media Trust content got in front of a, a, an audience of about 18 million via Community Channel and via our uh, media network, so it's about really giving access to people who are doing amazing stuff and telling amazing stories in their own communities to put that on a wider scale and, and in, hopefully inspire other communities as to how they can do the same. So this sounds as though it's going to be uh, really good for getting uh, news out there. Um, one of the other things that's necessary within communities and between communities is the communication of stuff which might not be seen as news by most people but is actually interesting and useful and how did you do that and so forth. Is that part of this project or is that another issue altogether? Uh, I think it's as important. I mean, the, the News is a bit of a focus for this project and that's probably, I guess, where the aggregation will be. Um, but it's about helping people communicate and tell the stories that they want to tell, whatever's important to them where they, where they are. And not necessarily just geographic communities either, although I suspect that might be where, where we start. Um, but absolutely, news, views, analysis, features and so on. It might be that a news outlet says, I want to do some more of these kind of features and stuff, or, or, uh, and we can help them do that. It might be that somebody who, who, is, who is blogging but not necessarily reporting news might want to turn their much-read blog into more of a news channel and link up with other reporters in their area, and we might be able to help them do that. But it's, it's very much about sharing what's happening, about trying to amplify what's happening, connect it better, aggregate it, put it in front of a wider audience rather than recreating wheels or, um, or doing anything uh, you know, amazingly spectacularly new. Um, how far is the aggregation and the way that content is handled at that national level uh, going to be shaded by kind of professional news values and how far can it stick with the uh, 
rather more homegrown, home knitted flavour of a lot of hyperlocal news? Uh, I think that the uh, homegrown flavour of hyperlocal news is part of its appeal. You know, the research showed that people want local views, um, but they do want a, a sense of uh, validation and they do want a sense of quality to that. So, what we'll be trying to do, I think, is 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 put in some more mainstream media qualities into some of the local approach, but it's not about destroying uh, the local approach, far, far from it in fact. And you know, we've worked with news organisations all the time that want the local news, they want the local stories, and people want to hear the unedited views and, and voices of people in local communities, and that's absolutely what we'll be trying to do. Uh, is there any scope here for working with some of the networks that have developed over the last few years around hyperlocal? I'm thinking talk about local uh, community voices, other people doing um, community reporting who uh, are doing great stuff at the local level, would like to get up to the kind of level you're talking about. Uh, is there scope for partnership with them as well as with professional uh, yeah. news organisations? Absolutely and in terms of the quantity of partnerships I'd say that throughout the project those kind of organisations will make up the sheer majority of people we're, we're talking to. Now what's clear is this won't work unless people who are doing it already get, in, get on board um, and so it's absolutely within our interest to make sure they, they do um, and to talk to them and collaborate with them and find out really what they want from it um, and we can, we can try and provide that. We won't be able to provide everything but we might be able to provide a lot um, and it's not just about us telling that story but about connecting people to, to hear from each other and, you know, it might be somebody who's got an amazing website uh, that can inspire somebody who's, who's got an amazing church newsletter and vice versa and so it's about very much about connections and very much about networks and, and built on and responding to the, the research that, that showed all of these amazing networks that, that are already in place. Is, is there any budget left for those other networks <laughs> or uh, the usual question in these hard times or are you fairly tight on uh, what you're going to need to spend centrally? Well, unlike Community Voices, which was a grant-giving programme, this isn't per se. However, we do have some funds with, for working with partners. Um, f few and far between, I have to say, in these, in these times. Um, but part of what we'll be doing is looking to access other funds and uh, maybe between us as a, as a more coordinated collective group being able to leverage funds which can go to those grassroots organisations. We know that funding is important um, and we know that it's very difficult to do anything on a grassroots level without funds. We also know that it's, it's possible to do amazing things with just volunteers and with um, uh, freely available technology. So we want ideally a, a, a mix of the two but if we can get more funding through this initiative into the sector which goes to local organisations then great, fantastic. And finally it does seem to me this is a great opportunity um, to do some face-to-face -face convening of uh, these various organisations who are, are different places on the landscape geographically yeah. and in terms of their interests and start a process where you get more out of what we've got on the on the ground. Yeah. Do you think you can do some of that? Uh, kind of crazy yeah, event together? absolutely. Um, we're going to certainly have uh, some roundtable discussions in the English regions and in Scotland and in Northern Ireland and in Wales so that this project covers as well. Um, so we'll be uh, planning those soon. We've, we've opened up our website now for registrations of interest in the last 24 hours and had huge numbers of people say they want to be involved. Um, so I'd absolutely recommend people do that. Lo log on and register their interest. They'll be the first to get invited to those round tables and creative events um, and uh, we've got a media trust conference coming up in November we're going to have a big session on this there as well so we we'll, we'll want people to come along and take part in that so absolutely the more collaborative we can be uh, this is all very much about getting the best out of what's happening already and amplifying it and adding reach and quality to it uh, so the more conversations we can have the, the better and we're already having having lots we've got a, a packed diary full of meetings with people who on the announcement said we want to come and talk to you about it um, happy to have lots more